Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of Retina Round. I am Dr. Abdul Qadir, a VR and ocular oncology fellow. In this episode, I'll be presenting five interesting articles published during the recent month. Let's get started. The purpose of the first study was to evaluate the risk of developing late age-related macular degeneration after incident cataract surgery. A prospective cohort study in which the participant with eyes free of cataract surgery and late AMD at baseline was divided into two groups. The first group included eyes that received cataract surgery after the baseline visit and before any evidence of late AMD. And the second group including eyes that remained fickic until study completion. Both groups were followed up for 10 years for the development of late AMD, which was defined as the presence of geographic atrophy or new vascular AMD. Late AMD was identified in 408 eyes in the study group and 429 eyes in the FICIC control group. The study concluded that cataract surgery did not increase the risk of developing late AMD among participants with up to 10 years of follow-up and provided data for counseling AMD patients who might benefit from cataract surgery. Moving to the next study, which focused on observing the weekly rate of retinal vascular growth in babies with various stages of retinopathy or prematurity and its relation to the need of future treatment. A retrospective review of medical charts and retinal images of babies with various stages of ROP using the length of horizontal disc diameter of each eye, the vessel growth was measured from the disc margin up to the vessel tip in a fixed quadrant. And the rate of vessel growth was the ratio of vessel length to the number of weeks needed to reach that length. In this study, it was found that a rate of retinal vascular growth less than 0.54 disc diameter per week can be used to determine treatment requirements in babies with ROP. The next study evaluated the two years of drosinoid pigment epithelial detachment after laser and intravitreal anti-VGF treatment on 21 patients with bilateral intermediate age-related macular degeneration with drosinoid pigment epithelial detachment. The subject eye received low-energy Pascal laser treatment and the fellow eye was used as the control. Intravitreal injections were administered at three months interval from baseline to 12 months. The mean drusen area and drusenoid pigment epithelial detachment height were significantly reduced and mean risk protected visual acuity improved in the study eyes compared to those in the control eyes. But development of parafovial incomplete and complete RPE and outer retinal atrophy was significantly higher in the study eyes. In conclusion, laser and anti-VGF treatment may be a potential treatment option for intermediate age-related macular degeneration with drosinoid pigment epithelial detachment. However, considering the relatively high rate of secondary RPE and outer retinal atrophy development, long-term follow-up is mandatory to clarify the safety and efficacy of this treatment. The main purpose of the next study was to report the estimated incidence, cumulative rate, risk factors, and outcomes of submacular hemorrhage with loss of vision in new vascular AMD undergoing intravitreal injection of anti-VGF in routine clinical practice. A retrospective analysis of eyes receiving intravitreal injection of anti-VGF for new vascular AMD from January 2010 till December 2020. The estimated incidence was 4.6 submacular hemorrhage with loss of vision per year per 1,000 treated patients during the study. The cumulative rate of submacular hemorrhage per patient did not increase significantly with each successive injection. Submacular hemorrhage cases had a mean visual acuity drop of six lines at diagnosis, which then improved moderately to a four-line loss at one year. Our last study for this round aimed to investigate long-term visual outcomes in, of patients with PCV and typical new vascular AMD in real world setting. Method, it was a retrospective multi-center, non-interventional consecutive cohort study, which included 285 eyes with PCV and 902 eyes with typical new vascular AMD, who could be followed up for one year or longer from 2005 to 2018. Mean changes in best corrected visual acuity from baseline in the PCV and the typical new vascular AMD groups were compared. Baseline best corrected visual acuity was better in the PCV group than in that in the typical new vascular AMD group. 
The main changes in best oriented visual acuity from baseline in PCV and new vascular AMD group were compared at one, three, five, and seven years and showed deterioration in both PCV and typical new vascular AMD group with a better visual outcome in the PCV group. During the study, it was noticed that before 2006, the initial best corrected visual acuity was sustained for approximately one year in eyes with PCV and for less than half a year in eyes with typical new vascular AMD. However, after 20, 2007, when anti-VIH BGF agents were available, the initial best corrected visual acuity was sustained for four years in eyes with PCV, while it was sustained for one year in eyes with typical new vascular AMD. Here we reached the end of this episode. Hope to see you soon next month with the new interesting articles. Bye-bye.